people, what's the biggest mistake you made at your wedding? Honey, I love you, but said I do. Oh. <laughs> Not my mistake. Not my mistake. I love my wife. If something ever happens to me, please make sure the number one person of interest is Tim, as that is who would do something to me. Quincy, Illinois, a town with fewer than 45,000 residents, was known for being a safe and pleasant community, often hailed as the state's gym city. It had a reputation for low violence and crime. However, everything took a dark turn in the early hours of February 23rd, 2023. On that fateful day, 41-year-old Rebecca Postle, a mother of three, was discovered lifeless on her bathroom floor, surrounded by her own blood. The perpetrator turned out to be someone much closer than anyone could have anticipated. This is the tragic tale of Becky Postle's untimely end. Back in 2009, Becky had tied the knot with her ex-husband, Tim Bleefnick. They built a seemingly perfect family with three children, earning admiration from those in their circle. You know, when we knew Tim and, and Becky, that was when they had gotten engaged and were getting married, and it was a very happy time in their life. Bleefnick held a respected position in the Quincy Society, having completed his education at Quincy University, where he established himself as a noteworthy athlete. His talent earned him a spot in the university's Football Hall of Fame in 2019, at the time when Becky passed away, Bleefnick was serving at Quincy Farm Products in the business development sector. Becky was a person who dedicated her career to serving others. Having discovered her passion in the realm of nursing, she was more than a professional, but a deeply caring and committed individual. During the challenging times that the COVID-19 pandemic brought forth, she stepped up to contribute as a travel nurse. This role found her aiding patients battling the virus in numerous hospitals all across America. Even though life may have appeared perfect from the outside, the reality within the four walls was quite different. Becky and Tim Bleefnick's radiant smiles and family photos hid years of internal discord. This accumulation of years was gradual but steady. In 2020, Tim Bleefnick was seen in an episode of the widely watched game show Family Feud. During the game, contestants are asked questions, and points are awarded based on the popularity of the answers. What's the biggest mistake you made at your wedding? Honey, I love you, but said I do. Oh. <laughs> Not my mistake. Not my mistake. I love my wife. As it happens, Bleefnick was speaking from the heart. Jokes apart, his marriage was collapsing at the edges. Tim Bleefnick filed for divorce on January 21st, 2021. However, the news of his and Becky's divorce was not shocking to many who knew them. Both parents wanted to spend more time with their children than the other. Therefore, a heated custody dispute broke out. Even more, in May 2021, Becky confided in a close friend by text, saying, I absolutely think he'll try to take the kids sometime. Bleefnik was now known to people close to Becky as an abuser. Becky believed that she had to take precautions to keep herself safe from Bleefnik and to keep her kids safe from kidnapping. She disclosed that she thought Bleefnik had genuine mental health issues, but she was hesitant to request an order of protection. Becky had good reason to be fearful of the difficult battle that would be the divorce. Bleefnik was more than just a potential danger to her and her kids. She was aware that he was armed. In November 2021, Becky's first divorce lawyer revealed that Bleefnik had still not given back a 9mm firearm that belonged to Becky, one for which she had repeatedly requested a return. The court assigned a guardian ad litem to Becky's case in response to her worries. I, I serve as what's called a guardian ad litem. The role of a guardian ad litem is to represent the best interests of the children involved in the case, uh, whether it be a divorce, a family, or other type of case. On December 16th, 2021, after months of discussion, Becky first requested an ordinance of protection against Bleefnik's father. Like Bleefnik, she was concerned about her kids' safety when they were with their grandfather. It seems that the mother of three had begun to worry for her life. She wrote, He had screamed in my face, in a text message to a friend in 2021. He hurled stuff across the room where the kids and I were standing, and he shoved me in front of them, that same year, separately, in a text message to her sister. She told, if something ever happens to me, make sure the number one person of interest is Tim. I'm putting this in writing that I'm fearful he will somehow harm me. Becky's misery, meanwhile, was far from ended. On March 14th, 2022, months after the divorce had not yet ended, Becky texted a close friend, 
saying that if Bleefnik doesn't get it his way, he may literally lose his mind. The text alluded to the pending legal dispute over custody and divorce. A court order outlined the specifics of how Becky and Bleefnik were to swap the children in August 2022. When Bleefnik and Becky switch kids, they have to keep three feet or less between their cars for safety reasons. All the same, Becky understood that things were getting tense between her ex and the other person, even with the safety measures in place. Bleefnik began shopping for a new bicycle in the interim. Under the alias John Smith, he set up an anonymous Facebook account and began making inquiries on Facebook Marketplace. He inquired about a black mongoose bicycle that he also bought and a blue 26-inch Schwinn mountain bike. Melissa Young, a friend of Becky's, remembers seeing her at a nearby store on January 5th, 2023. She looked very mentally and emotionally exhausted, um, nothing like I used to see her. She was really in hopes to get the divorce over with and stuff. Did Becky tell you that she felt as though Tim could snap at any moment? Yes. Did she also tell you that she had found out that Tim was hiding money? Yes. Did she also tell you that Tim had told her, you'll be dead before you have any of my money? Yes. At about the same time, Bleefnik started acting strangely as well, and people started to notice. He inquired about the existence of any security cameras facing his property from Bradley Amon, his neighbor. He didn't. Bleefnik made an attempt to retrieve Becky's long-lost 9mm handgun on February 10th, 2023. Not wanting to do it himself, he called the Quincy Police Department and asked if they could return it for him. His plea was turned down. But maybe they ought to have granted Bleefnik's wish. His menacing actions were becoming more well-recognized, as was the toll they were taking on Becky. Ted Johnson, Becky's partner, made the decision to spend the night at the residence on February 13th, 2023. I would park right here, in this area. Right there behind the house by the driveway. Yes. That same night, between midnight and one in the morning, CCTV footage showed a bike passing by several nearby homes. Becky's surveillance system also sent a notification to his neighbor next door. Did you get an alert on your phone that there was motion in your drive? Yes. And did you view that video? Yes. When you viewed that video, did you see a person walking in your driveway? Yes, I did. By the way, between midnight and one in the morning, Bleefnik turned off both his phone and the electronic wristbands that tracked his movements. Bleefnik conducted several Google searches between 1.10 and 1.30 a.m., including ones for vehicle records, a license plate lookup, title registration, a VIN check, and the precise VIN and license plate registration of Ted Johnson. A call was sent to the Missouri Department of Revenue, the organization in charge of managing car registrations, at 1.32 a.m. The likelihood that Becky, a mother of three, was in danger, was growing as the coincidences between Bleefnik's late-night Google searches and the enigmatic biker lurking around her home began to pile up. However, no surveillance film from February 14th to the 21st showed the bike rider throughout that week. The identical cyclist was captured on camera in the same location on February 21st at 2.11 a.m. Rebecca messaged Bleefnik that same day, asking if he could keep the kids overnight for the next two days. Ted Johnson was her companion for the evening. The biker was captured on camera again the next day, February 22nd, riding the same route as before. The bike rider was recorded at approximately 1 in the morning, and the same thing happened later that night. The bicycle pulled up outside Becky's house and used a crowbar to gain inside. Becky attempted to dial 911 around 1.11 a.m. She was unsuccessful. Becky received a notification from the home security system about the open front entrance. Surveillance cameras show the biker returning the same route. He arrived at 1.16 a.m. It should be noted that on that particular night, between 12.28 and 2.07 a.m., Bleefnik's phone and his armband were disconnected. On February 23rd, around 6.45 a.m., a neighbor who lived close to Becky noticed Becky's front door was open and decided to leave for work. Bleefnik called his kids' school at 11.51 a.m. to request that they not allow his kids to walk to their mother's house. He told me that he would be picking them up instead of having them walk home. And approximately what time did he arrive at St. Peter's School on February 23rd, 2023? 1.50. So about an hour before the dismissal leaving. Yes. 
Bleefnik texted Rebecca's father around 3 p.m. The school had called to let them know that the kids hadn't been picked up yet, so he asked if he could give her a call to find out when she would be bringing them up. Becky's father, Bill Postal, would experience his worst nightmare at 3.30 p.m. When he got to Becky's house, he saw something strange right away. The front door was open. His calls went unanswered by Becky. His daughter was dead in the bathroom, lying in a puddle of her own blood. I went to check to see if she, was, she had any uh, heartbeat. I picked up her arm, but uh, rigor mortis had already set in. She had received 14 gunshot wounds. It would be discovered later that bullet shells had been discovered all over and beneath her body, indicating that she had been shot while lying down. By the time I answered the door, I didn't see anybody. But um, then I saw a man walking away. He had a long coat, so I didn't recognize him. And I asked him if he wanted something, and he turned around, and it was Bill, Becky's father. He said, I need to use your phone to call 911. Becky's dead. The news of Becky's passing reached Bleefnik at 4 p.m. He was clearly upset and responded in disbelief. On February 27th, the Quincy Public School's bus barn was next to an abandoned blue Schwinn bike that the police had found. The cyclist in the CCTV camera had been there more than once. On Monday, March 1st, police searched Bleefnik's house, but the inquiry into Becky's murder was far from over. This is the third known location to be searched in this investigation. Of course, that includes Bleefnik's home in Quincy and, of course, the residence in the 2500 block of Kentucky Road where Rebecca Bleefnik was found dead. In these type of cases, you want to get as much evidence as you can, and um, it, it continues all the way until, until the trial. Amidst the inquiry, law enforcement discovered shell casings in Bleefnik's cellar that corresponded with those discovered surrounding Becky's body. Also discovered in Bleefnik's house was a plastic bag with Becky's DNA. This finding is connected to evidence discovered at the scene of the crime. Tell me what you saw. Multiple pieces of what appeared to be plastic. The shooter used the sack as a homemade silencer. The results of Bleefnik's most recent Google searches implicated him once again. They covered things like the typical police response time, how to clean off gunpowder, and how to use a crowbar to open a door. Tim Bleefnik faces charges of first-degree murder following his arrest on the 13th of March, 2023. At his initial hearing, he entered a not guilty plea and was not granted bail. Bleefnik's lawyer insisted on his innocence over the entire six-day murder trial. Rather, they accused a prowler, the same one who had been spotted bicycling near the murder scene of being responsible. Three simulations that law enforcement ran to follow Bleefnik's path before the shooting were shown to the jury during the trial. The testing revealed that Becky's house had an easily climbable side that led to a window that the burglar had forced open. The timing of bicycle rides was also based on the path that the security camera rider took. The cyclist was photographed by security cameras at the very moment that Becky is thought to have died. Additionally, police shot into a 9mm handgun while enclosing it in a plastic bag that was exactly the same as the one the murderer had used. The plastic fragments produced by the gunshots resembled the ones discovered surrounding Becky's body in terms of size and form. Further Google searches turned up on day four of Bleefnik's trial. Can you just wash off gunpowder residue? Correct. This phone was used to visit a website, DIY quickly, how to use a crowbar to open a door. Yes. The extent to which Bleefnik had planned the assassination was becoming evident by now. Could you determine whether a shotgun round came from a particular gun among the searches? How can I open a window from the exterior? If I lock myself out, can I use a crowbar to force my door open? Is it possible to wash out gunshot residue? Tim Bleefnik was found guilty of all charges on the 31st of May in 2023. We, the jury, find the defendant, Timothy Bleefnik, guilty of first-degree murder. Timothy Bleefnik sentenced to life in prison on August 11th, 2023. But Becky's tragic death is more than spousal murder. It is a story of long-term domestic abuse and how her cries for help were repeatedly ignored. A mourning friend of Becky's wrote, We've watched, waited, and prayed for justice. We have to listen to women when they fear for their or their children's safety. This could have been prevented. It breaks my heart to know that these boys will grow up without their mama. We have to do better. The description reads, Despite the circumstances of her death, she is remembered for the life she cherished. A life of compassion, generosity, faith, and fierce love for her family.